Today we are going to discuss one of the defense platforms of the famous company Lockheed Martin. You can see on the left there is a logo of Lockheed Martin and on the right is their corporate headquarters. As I told you in my previous video, they are based out of Bethesda, Maryland. They are famous for designing fighter jets, although they have a lot of other businesses they are involved in. They employ nearly 1,10,000 people around the world and they are into different segments of business apart from defense platforms. As you can see on the screen, I told you about this in the last video also. By building and designing satellites, by selling them to government and private organizations, this particular company, Lockheed Martin, earned around $10.9 billion in 2019. This helps you understand that they are not only in manufacturing fighter jets or defense equipments. They have an array of business they are involved in. Now, let's get started. Today, the platform we are going to discuss is F-16. I'm sure most of you will instantly recognize it. It is one of the most well-known fighter jets around the world. It has been sold to many countries by the United States and is a part of many big air forces around the world. So today, we will study it in detail. Now, this particular aircraft was originally built by the Jet Division of General Dynamics in 1974. We already discussed a little about this big company called General Dynamics in our last video. They are the ones who originally designed and developed it in 1974. But the Jet Division of General Dynamics was acquired by Lockheed Martin in 1992. And that's why, as of today, Lockheed Martin is manufacturing this particular aircraft. Now let's see more about it. There are around 3,000 F-16s in use across 25 countries in the world including countries like Israel, Turkey and Pakistan. So it is one of those aircrafts which has its presence in maximum countries across the world. The latest variant of it is called F-16 Block 7072. Ever since it was developed in 1974, just like any other equipment or platform or defense equipment, it undergoes further improvement and enhancement. So there are various variants of it. The latest one is called the Block 7072. Talking about F-16, its speed is almost Mark II. Mark II will be equivalent to around 2,414 kilometers per hour. Any aircraft's speed is measured in Mark. Mark is equal to 1,234 kilometers an hour, which is the speed of sound. Now, F-16 can fly at the speed of around Mark II, so that comes to around 2,414 kilometers per hour, approximately. It has a service life of 12,000 hours, which means it can fly for around 12,000 hours before you have to do away with it. Now, this is something really, really big because even today's modern advanced fighter jets sometimes cannot match this capability. To give you an example, the Sukhoi 30 MKI, which India has, has a service life of just around 6,000 hours. Once it has flown for 6,000 hours, you have to retire it. Unless, of course, there is some development in the future which enhances and increases its lifespan. So you can understand it's a very versatile aircraft having a service life of 12,000 hours. Its engine is the GEF-110. It's a single engine aircraft. Now, this is the engine which you can see on the screen. Generally, all the engines look the same, but still it's better to see it once. This is the GEF-110 engine. Whenever you go for an interview and they talk to you about aircrafts, they generally ask you about the engine because that is what they want to know, whether you know about the engine, whether you know about how powerful the engine is. If you know about how powerful the engine engine is they will like you to explain how that power the strength of the engine is calculated so let's see that now this particular engine has a thrust of around 29,000 pounds 
which means it can push the aircraft ahead with the force of around 29,000 pounds. Now we know that it is 29,000 pounds, but tomorrow, if an interviewing officer asks you that please explain what is 29,000 pounds, then how are you going to go about it? Let's understand that. Now, generally, throughout the world, the strength of an en engine is measured in Newton. The Americans tend to measure it in pounds. Now, one Newton, if you talk about it in terms of the definition of physics, then one Newton is equal to the force which is needed to push one kilogram of mass one, kilo, one meter ahead per second squared. Now, that is a very technical way of talking about things. If the interviewing officer is not from science or engineering background, he probably will have a difficulty understanding it. Or if he is indeed an engineer himself or he's from Air Force, knows all these concepts, he would still like you to explain it in an easy to understand manner because that will help him understand that your factor one that is related to intelligence is very, very good. Now, let's see how you'll explain it. If you want to explain it in an easy way, how you can explain it is, if you stand and if your palm is right angle from your body, your elbow is bent at right angle to the body, and you hold around 100, gra 100 grams of weight in your hand, be it anything, be it a fruit, be it, be it a book, anything that is weighing just 100 grams, if you hold it in your palm, then the downward force which it will exert because of gravity will be one newton so that is the scientific and very easy way to explain it 100 grams of weight in your palm and it is pushing itself downward that will be one newton and 1000 newton is equal to one kilo newton now, what is the equation between Newton and pound? We will see that one pound is equal to 4.4 Newtons. So that is the relation between pound force and Newton and vice versa. One Newton is equal to 0 0.225 pound force. So I hope you'll be able to explain it if you are asked about engine strength in your interview in the future. Now let's move to the next point. The empty weight of an F-16 is around 20,300 pounds. That's roughly 10,000 kgs. That is the empty weight without any weaponry and without fuel load. The maximum takeoff weight, which means how much weapon and how much fuel load combined it can carry is around 28,000 pounds. That is the maximum takeoff weight. It can fly maximum with this kind of weight. Okay. So why are we saying that there's a difference between empty weight and takeoff weight? Let's see that. Now in this particular picture, you will be able to see that there are nine hard points. Hard points are the pods you can say on an aircraft which are designed to mount weapons or fuel load fuel tanks you know and here you can see that there is one at the tip of the wings there are three underneath the wings and one underneath the fuselage the fuselage is the central main part of the plane uh, which does not include the wings and the tail so that is where you see that you can mount weapons and due to that the weight increases in fact, it is capable of carrying two external fuel tanks of around 12,000 pounds each. So you can understand. And the general estimate says that underneath its wings at these nine points which it has, it can carry a combined weight of around 6,000 kgs at a time. So it is a very powerful kind of an aircraft. Now this is the fuselage of any aircraft, the main central body. It is highlighted in the image. Now, let's talk about the weaponry of F-16. What kind of weapons it can carry? The first and foremost is the AMRAAM, the Advanced Medium Range Air-to-Air -air Missile. Uh, in case you don't remember or you don't know, this is the same, the very missile which was used by the Pakistanis to hit the aircraft of Wing Commander Abhinandan. Indian Air Force had even shown 
parts of it during a press conference to prove that the Pakistanis were indeed involved in the attack and they had used F-16s. So this is that missile. It is manufactured by Raytheon, as I told you in the previous video. Raytheon is very good at manufacturing missiles. Some of the best missiles used by the Air Force of the United States come from Raytheon. Now this is AMRAAM. Let's see some of the features of AMRAAM. It's a beyond visual range missile, which means you can use it to hit an enemy aircraft which is not even within visual range. It can fly at a speed of around 4 Mach, that is roughly around 4900 kilometers per hour. As I told you earlier, 1 Mach equals to 1234 kilometers per hour. Its weight is around 150 kg, but the warhead weight within the missile is of around 18 kgs. Now, warhead is where the main explosive and the fragments, if at all, you know, this particular missile has any fragments in it of steel or tungsten, then they are filled in the warhead. And in the remaining body, you will have all the electronics, the sensors, the propulsion guidance system. Uh, that's why the weight is more than the warhead weight. There is a huge difference. The range remains classified, but it is estimated to be 55 to 120 kilometers. By classified, I mean it has never been officially declared. It has been kept a secret. And it is a 3.6 meter long missile with a diameter of around 17.7 centimeter. Now the second missile which it can carry and launch is the Sidewinder missile. Again, I told you about it in the last video. It is manufactured by Raytheon and happens to be one of the favorite missiles of American Air, Air Force pilots. Now let's see this particular missile in little detail. It can fly at a speed of around 2.5 Mach, weight is around 85 kgs, it has a 9 kg warhead, 16 kilometer range, around 3 meter long and 13 centimeter in diameter. So this is the second most important weapon that the F-16 is capable of carrying and launching. Now this does not mean that it is having only these two options. It can carry a variety of missiles. We'll just discuss one or two more. Now this is the Sparrow air-to-air -air missile. Nowadays it's not considered that good because more advanced and modern missiles have come in. But this of course was a very reputed piece of technology till a few years ago. It's an air-to-air -air missile, travels at the speed of around 4 Mach, weight is around 230 kg. It carries a 40 kg warhead, so more destructive power. And it has a range of around 45 to 85 kilometers, depending on which variant you use. There are different variants. So minimum you get is around 45 kilometers. It's a 3.7 meter long missile. The next weapon it can carry is the AGM-88 Harm missile, that is a high-speed anti-radiation missile. It is mainly designed to target radars and air defense systems. It mainly homes in, it gets moving towards any piece of equipment which is emitting radio waves in a very intense manner. It was designed to destroy radars and air defense systems. It has a speed of around 2 marks. Weight is around 360 kg. Then it carries a warhead of around 65 kg. So extremely destructive. 45 kilometers is the minimum range. It is around 4.14 meter long. The next weapon we can talk about is the Harpoon anti-ship anti missile actually. Now this particular missile was designed mainly for naval ships and are used to destroy enemy ships. But the F-16 is capable of launching this missile as well. Now this helps you understand how versatile an F-16 aircraft is. It can fire air-to-air -air missile. It can fire air-to-surface missile. It can destroy radars. It can even target ships in the ocean. So it is an extremely versatile aircraft. Now talking about the Harpoon anti-ship missile. 
Its speed is around 855 kilometers an hour. That is subsonic. That is below 1,234 kilometers an hour. Because the weight is around 725 kgs and it has a 360 kg warhead. Now you can understand that you need a more heavier, bigger warhead so that you can destroy something bigger. You cannot destroy a ship with a 16 or 10 kg warhead even though it will cause harm of course. But if you want to cause lethal damage then you will need a bigger warhead. That's why you have a 360 kg warhead on this particular missile. It has around 90 kilometers of range and it is around 4.37 meters long. Now, in terms of weaponry, the F-16 is even capable of firing nuclear bombs. And in fact, the one you can see on the screen is from the B-61 series of nuclear bombs, which the United States had constructed right from the late 60s uh, in its famous Pantex plant, which is in Texas, which mainly assembles and deassembles nuclear warheads for the American defense establishment. Now, let's see what kind of features this particular warhead has. Its length is of 12 feet. It is having a nearly 400 kg weight, that is 825 pounds. Now, this comes with four variants of warheads, depending on what you want to use and how destructive you want to be with this weapon. One, the least damaging is the 0.3 kiloton, one is the 1.5 kiloton, one is 10 kiloton, and the biggest one is the 50 kiloton. Now, you need to understand the destructive element of a nuclear weapon is measured in kiloton. How destructive it is, what kind of an intensity will be of the blast that is measured in kiloton. So, what is a kiloton and how do we measure or understand it? We will just see that. Now, as I told you, the yield is of around 0.3 to 50 kiloton. Now, in layman's language, one kiloton will be equal to the explosion of 10 lakh kg of dynamite. So if you get a heap of 10 lakh kg of dynamite and you explode it, then the effect which will happen will be of one kiloton. The intensity of the blast of 10 lakh kg of dynamite will be of one kiloton. How will you still explain it in a more easier manner to someone on the street? Let's see that. Now, let's take an example of the 120mm mortar shell, which weighs around 14.2 kg. This is the 120mm mortar. Indian Army uses it. Many armies across the world use it. Its round looks something like this, although this isn't of the Indian Army. But just to show you an example, I have put up the image. Now, this is how the round is. It weighs around 14 kgs and in that, the amount of explosives is around 2.8 to 3.2 kgs. Most of it, in fact, is dynamite. And when it explodes, it destroys everything within 30 meter radius. And that is called lethality in artillery language or area of destruction. So you can imagine that a bomb having just around 2.8 to 3.2 kg of dynamite destroys everything within 30 meters of its radius. So how destructive will be a weapon which is having the capacity of 50 kiloton? It has the capacity, 1 kiloton is 10 lakh kg of dynamite. We are talking about 50 kiloton, just how destructive it will be. And not just the B-61-12, the F-16 uh, fighter jet, in fact, can launch many other B-61 series nuclear weapons, like the B-61-3, which has the maximum yield of around 170 kiloton. Then it can even fire the B-61-4, which has a maximum yield of around 50 kilotons. Even the B-61-10, which 
has a maximum yield of around 80 kiloton. Uh, it is not able to fire the bigger B61 series bombs like the B61-11, uh, which has a maximum yield of 1200 kiloton or 1.2 megaton. 1200 kiloton is equal to 1.2 megaton. So you can imagine it is very destructive. It can even carry and launch nuclear weapons. Now, to help you understand in an even better manner, the bomb which was dropped on Hiroshima, which was called Little Boy, is said to have been of just 15 kiloton yield, 15 kiloton destructive capacity. And the one which was dropped on Nagasaki, which was called Fat Man, had a destructive capacity of just 30 kiloton. So you can imagine how destructive will be this bomb if you use the 50 kiloton warhead. Now, another major piece of equipment which the F-16 has is the 20mm M61A1 six-barrel Vulcan Gatling gun. I'm sure you must have seen this in Hollywood movies a lot. Now, this particular gun... Uh, is mounted on the right side of the fuselage, on the upper right side. I'm sorry, on the upper left side. And if you talk about its features, it's very destructive. It can fire at the rate of 6,000 rounds per minute, that to 20 mm rounds. And in fact, if you use the A2 version of this gun, which the F-16 doesn't use, then it's even more potent. It can fire 6,600 rounds per minute. If the pilot wants, he can decrease the rate to around 4,000 rounds per minute. But it does not mean that the aircraft will be able to carry 6,000 or 10,000 or 12,000 rounds. In fact, that's where the irony is. Even though the gun has a very high rate of firing, the number of rounds you can go ahead and mount in an aircraft is just around 500. So the pilot has to use this particular gun very, very judiciously. He cannot just fire all the rounds in one go. And as I told you earlier, it is mounted towards the upper right side of the fuselage. I'll just show you in an image. In this particular image, you will be able to see, uh, I have highlighted the area where the gun is. You can see the opening from where the gun will fire. And in fact, there's a close-up of F-35 in which you can see how it looks when the gun fires. Even the F-35 carries the Welcome Gatling gun. The unique thing about the American aircrafts is that they prefer to have the gun mounted on the upper side of the fuselage, whereas in other parts of the world, they prefer to have the gun at the base of the fuselage, underneath the fuselage. As you can see in the Rafale, which we have bought recently, I have highlighted the area where the gun is. It's at the base of the fuselage underneath the wing. So there is this difference between the way the Americans like to develop their aircrafts and design them and the way the rest of the world does it. And that is a very unique thing about them. And that brings us to the end of this particular topic that was all about F-16. And I hope you really found it interesting and would make notes from this. And guys, I would just like to correct one thing. When I was talking about the nine hard points, by mistake, I said it can carry two tanks of 12,000 pounds each. Whereas in reality, I wanted to say 1,200 pounds each. So please make that correction. And that brings us to the end of this particular video. I really hope you have liked it and have learned something interesting today and would uh, like to talk to your friends about this. Please make notes. It will prove very, very useful for you in the future. And that was all about F-16. And as I've always requested you, please give me a feedback. Thank you for watching. Please give me feedback about how the video was. Please leave your comments in the comments section. If you really like the video, press the like button. If you have some feedback to give regarding where you thought the video could have been better or what were the areas where it was not good, please let me know. I'll be very happy to hear from you. I want this channel to be very, very interactive. Lastly, 
if you really like this video please share it with your friends encourage everyone whom you think can gain by being on this page to join this page and watch the videos i will post my next video will be live in another three to four days so please watch out for that as well that will be about an even more interesting platform something that is an absolute piece of american innovation i'm sure you will love it i'll try to keep that video short i'll try to keep it below 30 minutes but i would like to include every important piece of information in it so please watch out for it till then please take very good care of yourself enjoy the rest of your evening stay happy stay healthy stay safe till then Goodbye.